Hi players, bonjour from Paris, my name is Asaf Hirsch and welcome to my channel Easy Board Games. Today, with the cooperation of Ludus Magnus Studio, I'm very happy to show you the solo mode for Black Rose Wars. This is the very first solo mode that was created for this game and you'll be able to find the material for the print and play in their website. I'm going to attach a link in the first comment. As always, if you learned something new or if you saw something that you like, please consider subscribing to my channel and help me grow this amazing community. Like and comment on the video, let me know what did you think and also which games would you like to see on this channel. Ready to fight the Black Rose and control the Lodge? Let's go to setup. All right, guys, so I'm just going to uh, assume that you already know how to play the basic version of Black Rose Wars. So here I'm just going to show you what is the difference in uh, the setup for the solo mode. So as you saw, we have a few activation tokens that were going to be a little bit different. So from the print and play, we're going to change, for example, the crypt, uh, the Black Rose room, the throne room, and a few others. Then we will take one mage cell and we will put it basically wherever we want on the board. So I'm going to put it right over here because it's going to be the closest to me. Then we have a few evocation cards that are new with the print and play. So what we will do with this is just to shuffle them and we're going to keep them separated from the evocation cards that we have with uh, the basic game. Then we will use the 15 quest cards that are coming also with the print and play. So we have five for each moon phase and we're going to put them again next to the board just like we uh, would have used in the basic game. Also, we will have some event cards that are different from the ones that we have in the core box. So we're going to use the materials that we have in the print and play. Then we're going to take the two tokens, one of the mage that I've chosen, in this case it's going to be Rebecca, and the token of the Black Rose, and we're going to put it on zero. After that, we're going to set the Perillium, which is something new that we have with this print and play. And as you can see, I don't really have something to go over here in the middle, but it goes from values from zero, and then if I turn it, it's going to be all the way uh, from minus one to minus five, and on the other side, all the way from plus one to plus five. For now, we're going to set it at zero and put it next to us. Now, since in the solo mode we don't really have a library, then we're just going to take one of the three pre-constructed decks and we're going to take all the uh, spells that we can see in one of them. This is basically going to be our grimoire and we'll not be able to use more spells into it unless it's from the deck of the forgotten spells. So I have chosen Annihilator and basically I already constructed uh, this uh, deck. So as you can see right over here, and we're just going to uh, shuffle it as we're going to see just like in the normal version of Black Rose Wars and we'll put it as our Grimoire. The only deck of spells that we are going to use is the Forgotten Spells. Now we will need to choose the game difficulty that will go from easy to medium and hard. If we've chosen the easy, we're going to draw four a Black Rose Evocation from the new print and play. If it's medium, we're going to take six and hard, we're going to take eight. The first monster that we're going to draw, we're going to put it in the Black Rose room, then the second one in the throne room, and then going clockwise, we're going to spread it around the Black Rose room. If we've chosen the hard difficulty, the eighth evocation, we're going to put again in the Black Rose room. Now, since I've chosen the easy mode this time, let's draw four of these cards. So the first one is going to be the Malakado. So we have here a few details, let's just go over it really quickly. First of all, we have here uh, the number in the red. This is going to be the aggressiveness level of this evocation. Right next to it, we have a number that is going to help us identify that specific evocation on the board. And then later we have already the signs that we know. This is uh, how many rooms this uh, evocation can walk, what is the damage, what is their health, and then something else that we're going to have here, some sort of a condition. In this specific case, it says if there is a single Malakado in play, his movement is two, instead of the normal one that we can see over here. Let's put it right over here so we can follow it up. And we're going to take one of these uh, Malakado. This is, by the way, my chance to brag how beautiful my girlfriend painted these miniatures. So we're going to take this Malakado and we're going to look for a number one which is the number that we have over here. So again, with the materials of the print and play, we have this kind of uh, tokens, let's say. So we're just going to take the same color and the same number, and we're going to attach it to this specific evocation. In this case, it's yellow number one. 
So what we're going to do is going to take this miniature and we're going to put here this number one so we can identify it. Since this is the first evocation that we have drawn, we're going to put it right in the middle in the Black Rose room. The second evocation that we're going to draw is an Andromeda. So again, we're going to put it right over here and then we can see that we have here green number one. And then we can take the miniature of the Andromeda and we're going to put here number one. I do agree that not all the time it's going to be super comfortable, but we'll try to do our best. Since this is the second evocation that we have taken, we're going to put it in the throne room. So right over here and with number one right next to it. The third evocation that we're going to draw is the Bone Knight. So let's put it right over here and we can see that it's red number two. So we'll take the miniature, put here number two, and we're going to put it in the next room going clockwise from the throne room. So it's going to be right over here. And evocation number four. Oh man, it's the one that I could never read. Uh, Landsknecht or something like that. Let's say, let's say German skeleton. So let's put it right over here and it says grain number four. So again, going to take the a specific miniature, going to put number four at the base and going clockwise, it's going to be over here in this room. Now we can take, of course, a, the mage miniature and put it in its cell. So in general, we're going to have pretty much a normal game of Black Rose Wars. We're going to take a, the first turn and then it's going to be the Black Rose and then we're basically just going to alternate turns until us, the mage, has exhausted a, completely all their actions. And that means that the moment that happens, this phase, the action phase, is completely over. So the Black Rose is not going to receive another turn after. We're going to take the first turn and also the last turn because the moment we exhausted our actions, this phase is going to be completely over. So let's see how one round goes and I think that after that you'll be able to play this game very easily. So the first phase that we have is the Black Rose phase. This is going to be exactly the same as we saw in the core game, but with the print and play of this specific solo mode, a material. So we're just going to draw the first event card that we can see over here, and let's see how does it go. Over here we can see a two parts of the card, this part and this part. In the first part, we also have some text in white, and this is something that we will need to resolve immediately when we're taking this event. And then at the bottom part over here, we're going to uh, do whatever it says every time we're going to activate the Black Rose. That means every time it's the Black Rose's turn. And the bottom part of the card we already know from the base game. So just how many uh, power points the Black Rose is going to receive when we draw this event how many power points it's going to receive when it's going out from the uh, events board. And also we're going to have sometimes a small uh, quest that we can see at the bottom. Here it says defeat the Malakoda and then we will receive two power points and also we'll be able to discard this event without the Black Rose receiving the power points that is stated on the card. So right now we're going to summon one Malakoda in a room adjacent to the mage's position. So that means it's going to be right over here or here. So right now we're just going to search for uh, Malakoda evocation, but from, of course, the new material of the print and play right over here. So it doesn't matter if I'm taking this one or this one, we're going to take the first one. Uh, it's going to have exactly the same information as the other Malakoda, but this is going to be yellow number two. So we're just going to take the corresponding miniature. I know it's not painted, but we were a little bit short of time. We're going to take the same token that we saw before, but number two yellow. And we're going to put it where we were instructed in one of these rooms. Doesn't matter right now where we're going to put it. So let's say it's going to be right over here. So that was the first part of the card. And right now we're going to put it in the position and we're going to give to the Black Rose two power points. Then we're going to have the study phase, but since we don't have here a library, the only thing that we'll need to do is to draw four cards from our grimoire. So one, two, three, four, and this is going to be a, our hand right now. Of course, if from a previous round we had also a cards in our hand that is going to be together, don't forget that we have a hand limit in the case of Rebecca, it's going to be eight. Then we're going to continue to the preparation phase, and this is going to be exactly the same as we uh, know from the base game of Black Rose Wars. So of course in this phase I'm just going to choose the different spells and where to put them. Right now it doesn't matter because I'm not going to do a playthrough, but we have it right over here. 
Going to the action phase, our mage is going to take the first turn. So let's just say that I used one physical token uh, to walk to this room, the cemetery, and activate it. Here it says summon one German skeleton. So we're going to now look for it in the uh, evocation cards from the base game. And then we're going to do exactly what we know again from the base game. So we're just going to take one uh, of these miniatures. This is going to be in the first position. So we're just going to uh, put one of these roses at the base of it. And we're going to put it right over here. And then for the second action, let's say that I've decided to use spell uh, number one. So I'm just going to inflict three damage. What I'm going to do is to take three of these uh, cubes, okay? And then put it over here on one of the evocation cards that I decided to apply the damage. Of course, it depends uh, on the card itself, on the spell. Right here, we're going to have on one adjacent uh, room that we have. So let's say that I've decided to inflict it on Malakoda, which is number two. So it's this card right over here. Then I'm just going to put three of these uh, cubes to signify that I did damage to this evocation on the card itself. Now it's going to be the Black Roses turn uh, to be activated. So first of all, we're going to go uh, to this uh, event card that we drew before, and we're going to pay attention to what we have right over here, which says each Andromeda in play is going to put two instability in the room where they are located. So we're just going to go and take two of these uh, cubes, and we're going to put them here and here. Then we will need to readjust the perillium. We're going to see what is the difference between uh, the PowerPoints that the Black Rose has and how many PowerPoints do we have. If the Black Rose has more PowerPoints, we're going to take down uh, the level of the perillium. So right now the difference between uh, us and the Black Rose is two. So we're behind by two points. So what we will do is to take back the perillium from zero to minus two. And this is something that we're going to do every time it's going to be the black rose uh, turn to be activated. So now uh, it was their turn, then we're going to do again a uh, one or two actions. And then when it's going to be the black rose's turn again, we will see again what is the difference. So it's a little bit a mechanism of balancing. And why is it important? Because we're going to activate only the evocations that have a aggressiveness level which is equal to or lower than the level of the perillium that we have in that specific turn. So if we have here minus two, we can see that we're only going to activate the Andromeda and then the Landsknecht. The rest of the evocations have levels of aggressiveness higher than the level of the perillium that we can see right over here. So what if the order of the activation? Right over here, we can see that we have a short list and we can see that the Andromeda is going to play before the Landsknecht. Also, of course, if we have a, a few evocations of the same type, we're going to go from the lowest number, starting with one, to the highest one. So if, for example, we would have activated the Malakoda, we would have started from this Malakoda because it's number one, and then we would have moved over here to number two. Now the actions that the a specific evocation would like to do is going to go by priority. So the first priority will be that the evocation moves towards the mage and attacks the mage. If it cannot accomplish this to the fullest, it's going to continue to the next priority, which means the evocation moves to reach the evocation controlled by the mage and attacks them. In our case, we have already one evocation that we're controlling. And if it cannot uh, achieve this to the fullest, the third priority is that the evocation moves as close to the mage as possible, always choosing to stay in the rooms with the least Black Rose evocations. So let's start, the Andromeda is going to play first, but we can see that at the end of her movement, the Andromeda is going to place one instability. So we know that the Andromeda is going to move a uh, one step. So it's right over here. First, it's going to put the instability over here, and then it's going to attack us for one damage. So we already know how we're going to do it from the uh, Black Roses Wars base game. Just taking one of these cubes and putting it right over here. The second invocation that is going to play is this one. So what we're going to do is to move one, two, and they're going to attack us for two damage. So again, we're just going to take two damage and we're going to put it right over here. And that's it, that's the uh, activation of the Black Rose. 
Now it's our turn again. So first of all, I forgot to flip this token last turn when I uh, activated this room. So just for the correction, now I'm going to use my second uh, physical uh, token to move over here. I would not like to activate this room right now, but just to uh, show you what is the difference between uh, this token and the one that we have with the base game. This one uh, says it's the pleasure room, move an event card on the event board one space to the right or to the left. Since it's not really uh, important, I will not activate it and I will leave it right over there. Then I'm going to use the second spell that we have right over here. And it says inflict three damage on the target model. If the target is a mage, blah, blah, blah. It's not important because it's the solo. So I'm going to uh, attack again this Malekado. So I'm going to take again three of these cubes. I'm going to put it right over here. And uh, as we can see right now, we already killed this evocation. So the first thing that we're going to do is to remove uh, the miniature and the token that we had. We're going to put back in the supply, taking back the cubes, and uh, we can put this card of the evocation back uh, in the pile of evocations. And now we can go back to the event card and see that we have completed our quest. So uh, defeat Amalekado. So this is basically what we did. So we're going to, first of all, receive two power points. So I'm just going to put it on two uh, also. And then I'm going to discard uh, this event card without the Black Rose receiving any power points for it. We finished our turn. Now it's the Black Rose uh, turn to activate. So first of all, we need to uh, uh, set the Perillium again. So we can see that now the difference uh, of the power points between us, the Mage and the Black Rose is zero. So we're going to take it from minus two to zero. So we're basically adjusting it again. So what we can see over here, that we're going to have a, a few evocations that are going to be uh, activated. First of all, it's going to be the Andromeda, then it's going to be uh, the German uh, Skeleton, and then we're going to have the Bone Knight also, because it's zero and our Perillium is zero. So it's not really important to show you how everything goes. I think you understood it. You're just going to follow the text that we have on the cards. So let's say that the Black Rose is going to do something and then it's going to be our turn again. So I'm going to use again the two spells, the standard one uh, uh, and the uh, quick spell. And we're going to do our turn. And because we now exhausted everything that we can do, okay, we don't have any more spells that we can uh, use. And also we don't have any more physical tokens that we can use, then the action phase is over. Moving to the evocation phase, first the uh, mage is going to activate his evocation, but it's going to be exactly like the standard rules of Black Rose Wars. And then the Black Rose is going to activate all of their evocation, ignoring the uh, aggressiveness level and the perillium level. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's going to activate all of its evocations. And of course, also we have a certain order. So we're going to start with the Andromeda, then going to the uh, Bonite and finishing with uh, the Malakoda. After we have finished the evocation phase, we're going to continue to the cleanup and it's going to be exactly as we know from the base game. So just some things that I would like to add about the uh, end game is that the PowerPoints are going to be calculated a little bit differently. First of all, about the quest cards that I completely forgot to draw in the last turn. So it's something that I can do in the next uh, Black Rose phase. The moment that we have completed one of these uh, quest cards, we're just going to score the uh, PowerPoints that we have received and then we're going to discard it immediately. Because in the solo mode, the number of quests that we have uh, resolved is not giving additional score at the end of the game. Then about the trophies, then obviously only the Black Rose can earn trophies and uh, each trophy that it will possess at the end of the game will score for it a uh, three power points. The next thing is uh, when a room is being destroyed, whomever has the most uh, instability tokens in this room is going to score immediately uh, the amount of power points that is uh, written on this specific uh, token and we're going to discard this token. In case that we have a, a tie, then the Black Rose is going to score that amount of power points. So of course the game is going to finish once uh, us or the Black Rose, we uh, reached 30 or past power points. And then the only thing that we will need to do is to add uh, the power points that the Black Rose has from the trophies to the score and then see who is the winner. Thank you. 